This is Mike with MT Worlds. I am back with the second video log for Interstellar Transport Company. Um, I, I'm going to be going through pretty much all the same information um, that I did in the first video log just because the video quality is really bad in the first one. Um, I'm also going to be adding a bunch of stuff that I, I, I forgot to do in the, in the first video and then um, some new stuff that we have developed in the past month. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to kind of jump right into the game here. Um, <clears throat> we'll do Teal, MT Worlds, Transport. Actually, you know what? Let's do Orange. Because my son's favorite color is orange, and he'd be very upset with me if I did not use orange. So, there we go. Um, so for those of you who don't know about the game, it is a, um, it's a transport management game in space. So what you're trying to do is, um, supply all of humanity's needs in the galaxy, uh, make sure that, you know, all the different colonies, all the different planets, moons have, uh, food, water, uh, consumer goods, you know, all the raw materials, everything else that humanity needs to uh, spread throughout the galaxy. So it, it starts in the year 2050. Um, basically Earth is running you know, pretty low on resources, it's just super crowded. Um, and we finally have enough technology to reach Moon um, and Mars and all of our other neighbors pretty easily. So you start there. Um, in a normal game, obviously there's tons of different game modes, you could start in a random uh, solar system if you want um, it, 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 you know there, there's all sorts of other different scenarios you could start with but in a normal game you start on earth and um, you have the moon colonized um, has like six million people on it and then you have Mars which is barely colonized um, but that gives you another place to transport goods with so gameplay kind of revolves around you setting up routes and managing those routes between the different um, planets and moons. So, if you go into Earth here, you'll notice that there's um, a supply and demand graph. So this will show you that Earth is supplying lots of food, lots of water, uh, but it needs um, raw materials and rare resources, and then also it's it's supplying some uh, colonists and um, other things like that. And you'll see the AI, AI has actually been, uh, um, it, it's been improved a lot since the last video that I've done. So um, kudos to uh, Chris, who is the um, other programmer on the team. He's been working on AI nonstop and he's just, I mean, he's done a great job with it. You'll see AI is already building gates here. Um, are you sure about Lisa's gate? Yeah. So we'll go ahead and lease two gates from the uh, spaceport on Earth, um, and then we will um, do likewise on the moon. And you'll, you'll see here, actually, uh, this is another new thing that, that I've been working on. It's the um, surface buildings. So on the moon, there is a... You'll see here it has a lot of rare resources available. I, I gotta fix this. The percentage sign should be up there, not down here. Anyways, um, it has a lot of rare resources on it. Not a lot, but 19%, which is better than 0%. So that is uh, a rare resource collector. So th there's different factories um, that collect different things, and then, or I'm sorry, different mines that collect different things like the lithium crystals or rare resources. Um, then there's different factories that produce um, either machinery, which is vital to new colonies, or um, dilithium fuel. And those are all buildings on the surfaces. And you can see here also, I mean, there's local offices, which will improve your, uh, your local reputation, which, you know, influences how much cargo you can carry, what, what um, rate of return you'll get for carrying that cargo, all sorts of things. Excuse me. Um, and then there's maintenance hangers, which will improve your, um, well, will allow you to repair ships. Um, taxi services, which will improve the rate at which your ships turn around at the starports, so they won't take as long to uh, 
to make a turnaround. And I, I had I had seen that some people requested that. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going off on a, a tangent away from those buildings, but uh, some people had requested that the camera get locked to buildings or to uh, planets when you're near them. So I, I actually did that. It was a great suggestion, whoever whoever made that. So you, you'll notice now when when you zoom into a uh, or when you get near to a planet, it actually kind of locks it. And then when you get just far enough, there it goes. So now it's unlocked. So that helps a lot if you're just trying to get in and you know get get a nicer picture while you while you do your management and stuff so you can be in the finance tab looking around here um whatnot um another thing that people want to see was the graphs I'll, I'll get to I'll actually get to that later when there's some data in there um okay so we have our uh spaceports let's order some ships okay so we'll have We'll go with the bigger ones. We'll get one that is all water. And then we'll get another. Let's go into the moon and make sure this makes sense. Okay, so yeah, it wants food and water. Let's also look for consumer goods, but I think the earth is not really supplying that much right now, if I remember correctly. Eh, it's supplying some. Actually, it's supplying quite a bit. Okay, well, e either way, it, it, actually, that brings up another good point. So, the uh, the cargoes actually carry more, I'm sorry, the cargo slots carry more than one cargo type. So, you see here, there's dry, climate-controlled uh, cargo slots that can carry food, it can carry consumer goods, it can carry rare um, resources. So, it, it's not just one... Um, one type of resource so that it, it forces you to kind of set up your routes in a strategic way where you know you, you're you're always utilizing the ship back and forth um, and if you don't there's there's a possibility that you might be losing money on the route all right so we have one ship that's all water that's on order we're going to do another one that is mostly food um, we'll throw in one and let's go. All, let's, yeah, well, um, I don't know. We'll do two machineries on this one. So we'll do all food and two machineries. Order ship. And then we'll do a smaller ship, which we'll just do colonists. And all these will be assigned to, um, to a route between the Earth and the Moon. So let's set up a new route. So this is kind of how you set up the route. So um, you open up the routes, you go to new route. We just changed the fonts. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the uh, all the fonts are kind of hanging off the top of the menus right now, so um, that needs to be fixed. So I, I know it's kind of ugly right now. All right. So, oops, didn't mean to make two. Let's delete one of these. All right. So we created a new route. I'm gonna add stop. Select your planet. Add stop. Um. Now, here's something I missed in the last video, actually. So, this is really important, too. The All the routes have... Um, um, the different cargoes down here. So, you'll see all the, all the different cargoes, all the different passengers that you can carry. Um, so, if you click on the passengers, it'll give you a ticket price. You can actually change the, um, the ticket price. You know, so people that are getting dropped off the moon, you click down here on the... Uh, the lowest level seating which is the one we bought in our ship so it's $38 per seat um, that we're charging right now so we'll, we'll just leave it at the default the, the default is kind of a um, you know it, it should be good for most situations but depending on what your competition is doing you might want to raise or lower it um, so as I was saying about the cargos if you click on like let's let's click on the moon here and then click on food um, so we're unloading all and we, we don't want to wait for food so actually we don't want to pick up any food from the moon so just in case the moon goes into supply so uh, here let's let's go into the moon so I can explain it just a little bit better so j right now the moon is demanding a lot of food but say um, everybody starts delivering food to the moon and all of a sudden this slips down the supply 
Um, you don't want to start transporting food back to the earth. That would just absolutely make no sense. It's just a waste of fuel. Um, so we want to make sure that sort of situation doesn't happen. Let's go back to our routes. Click on moon, food, and want to pick up none. Right. And um, same thing with water. So pick up no water. And same thing with machinery. Pick up no machinery. So you'll see in, in that way, I mean, y you can really control um, what your uh, what you're doing with each individual cargo um, so you have total control over over all that so let's let's go to rare resources here um, so on the moon um, we want to wait for a full load here on the rare resources um, so that, actually no I don't want to do that because it's not going to make them that fast so we'll just set to do not wait. So there's there's wait for full load, do not wait. There's next hop demand, um, which will actually pick up the amount that would satisfy the next hop. So if it's a really low demand in the next hop, you don't want to just saturate the whole thing. You know, if you have if you have other places to deliver that cargo to, you want to have it available for that. So that's why the next hop is in there. It's it's for very specific situations, um, or pick up none, of course. And then on the unload side, uh, there's unload all, which will just dump all your cargo. It doesn't really matter if you're going to get paid for it or not. So, I mean, if, you, if you've satisfied all the demand on a planet, you're not going to make money for delivering cargo there. Um, there's deliver and store, which will actually move it into your company hangar. So if you're looking to um, set up like a, a waypoint between um, like a, a warehousing uh, colony let's say so it, moving when you launch a ship off of like earth it's more expensive than launching it from the moon because earth has more gravity uh, you have to pay for more fuel so in some situations you might want to set up like a uh, short range delivery to the moon and then do your longer range deliveries from the moon to you know the outer planets or whatnot um, and then there's deliver and hold where you deliver up to the amount that satisfies demand then hold down the ship and just kind of carry it on to the next uh, planet um, deliver none store all so those kind of self-explanatory and then you could turn the the stop active or, or hold that stop all right so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense then also you see in the the route screen here you have um, you could turn off competitor routes so if you just want to see your own routes you could do that we'll, we'll we'll actually turn the competitor routes off just because it, it gets a little bit messy when you're just looking at earth and moon um, alright so our, our competitors have gotten a huge jump on us as you can see they, they already have you know like four or five ships each going back and forth between the earth and moon here um, so we kinda have to catch up alright so you go into ships this is how we assign um, assign ships to a route. So you click on the ship, you assign the route, um, and you can name these routes of course. So let's let's start all these ships and we'll see our, our orange ships going across here. Uh, if we pause the game real quick we can actually get a better look at what they're carrying. So this one's carrying 45 water um, this one is carrying 35 food and 10 machinery. It's carrying all 10 machinery. That's good. Um, this one is carrying 20 passengers, which are all colonists. You can tell from the um, the tooltip just off to the right here. And also, this tooltip gives you a distance. It um, tells you what route they're on and everything else. Um, so it's it's a lot of helpful information. You can also click on the um, the ship and you get a little view of you know what they're doing you can turn on the, the camera follow um, right here you can duplicate the ship you can edit the route from here um, so a lot of really useful stuff there um, alright so let's have a look at the reports I told you guys that I would show you that 
So from here, <clears throat> you can actually get a better idea of what um, the other companies are doing, how much money they're making. Um, so this is the overall profitability. Um, as you can see, we're all not profitable yet, but that should change sooner or later. Uh, if you go to income, it just gives you raw income. Net worth will tell you, you know, how much all their assets are worth, cash, ships, um, any of the service buildings that the uh, company owns, that sort of thing. So th that just kind of gives you a quick overview of um, your company versus the other companies. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? What else? Um, go to finances here. We have. Yeah, you can look out pretty much as far as you want. So if you want to get an overview of what you did in the last 30 days, you can do that. Or if you want to go back, you know, one whole year, you can do that also. All right, so we have um, we have a route going between these two. Let's see how the supply is doing on the moon. You can tell we're adding population here as well, so the demand for colonists is pretty high right now. Um... Oh, I almost forgot. So if we go to Earth, you can tell uh, who's waiting for what by looking right here. So that there's a lot of colonists waiting to go to Mars, and there's a ton waiting to go to um, the moon, actually. So we might want to get a second ship doing that. Um, but you got to keep in mind, when, when you increase the population, I mean, because running a full ship full of colonists, I mean, that's like... Um, 200 300,000 people per delivery so you increase the population pretty dramatically each time you do that um, so you have to keep up with your food water uh, res you know raw materials everything else that that needs to be in check because you will start starving the planet if you don't so if you look at the moon I mean if we let this go for a while it, it's gonna you know and and the AI well, the AI will keep up with it now, but if, if for whatever reason they didn't, then you would see those demands and, and supply, you know, the demands creep up. Alright, so if we look at Mars, let's see how Mars is doing right now. Okay, so they have 67 food and 100 water waiting. They're using about one every week. So we kind of need to get a ship over there. The AI has not brought, I don't think they have, let's check our, oops, gotta fix that. The, um, you can actually click through the menus right now, that needs to be fixed. Alright, so show, show competitor routes, let's put that back on. You can also turn off the orbit lines here, so if you want it a little cleaner, you can do that, which I'll actually leave it off for now. Um, so let's go to Mars and we will build a or rent a couple of gates and then I will create a new route between the earth and Mars and I'll rename this route so this will just be called Mars <clears throat> and you could set up routes with more than two stops you know that uh, they can have as many stops as you want on them so if there's a um, situation where you want to you know do three stops um, where it makes sense to do that. You know, you're, you're perfectly fine to do that. Um, so we'll do the same thing with the Mars route. We'll turn off, um, you know, uh, pick up no food, no water, no machinery, just because we don't want that to be picked up and, and, you know, brought back to Earth. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and the population is not that high on Mars, so I think what we'll do, well, we need $50,000 to buy, um, to buy this larger ship. So, yeah, what we'll do, we'll actually take out a loan for like $25,000. Um, ah, the loan is broken. That's a shame. Th so th there was just some work done with the sliders today in the UI. And I, ah, that stinks. 
Oh well. Yeah, so I can't I can't show you taking out a loan. Um, so we'll just have to do a small ship. That's fine. So we'll do one small ship, and we will. Let's see. We'll do two water, one food, and one set of passengers so that we can transport the uh, uh, colonists there. I'd really like machinery too, but I mean they're gonna need water and food, so we can't really can't really do that. All right, so order that ship <clears throat> and. Um, We'll just assign that to the Mars route right now. We don't really have to at all. It's still on order, as you can tell here, but um, we'll just assign now so we don't forget or whatever. And you'll see we get um, we have orbiting animations. They, they don't really orbit the planet. They just kind of circle around it. It looks more like a queuing animation to me. I really like how it turned out. So um, you'll see if, if your gates are full, the ships will just kind of circle around. Um, you can see them you know, doing the same thing right here. So I saw one circling at Earth, so that's telling me that we need another gate. However, leasing a gate is $21,000 on the Earth. Um, the more developed, the larger a, a, a colony, a planet is, the more expensive it is, of course. So uh, we can't afford that right now. Oops. Oh, well. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so our ship should be about ready for Mars. Let's speed up time a little bit, just so we can get on with this. Hmm. Come on. There it is. Okay. So it's assigned, and you see your cargo load, load out here, and let's just go ahead and start that. Let me get an idea of what it's delivering again. It's doing five food, ten water, five uh, colonists. So that'll help out. It's not a whole lot, um, but as I said before, it's doing, what, half a food every week, so that should be enough. Um, depending on how fast the the ships come back and forth between the between Mars and Earth. Excuse me. Um. So yeah, that, that's just a quick overview. Um. I don't think anything was colonized again. I really wanted to show you guys. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pause the um, the recording and just kind of wait until something else is colonized so I can show you that. Okay. So it took almost two full years, but. Finally, we have a colony on uh, Saturn's moon of Rhea. So, um, let's go there. We'll buy a... I know, it's not actually in the rings. We'll have to change that. So we'll buy a gate, or we'll rent a gate on Rhea. And what does it need? It needs food, water, machinery, of course. Uh, could use some consumer goods, but we'll, we'll see about that. All right, so let's get one. Um, let's get a route between Earth and Rhea. Actually, let's order the ship first, because that takes a while. So we'll do... Um, yeah, we'll do one, one line of food, one machinery, and then two lines of water. That is a pretty good setup for a, the smallest ship um, if you're just supplying a new colony that's that's not a bad setup at all all right so we'll do new route add stop to earth to Rhea and we'll give this a name and somebody else has suggested that we um, automatically name the routes which is a great suggestion also I will be sure to do that Basically, what I'm thinking is that if it doesn't have a a, a um, name defined by a user, I'll just give it the uh, the name of the the planets in the um, that were added to the route. All right, so we have to wait for our ship to be delivered, and then we can um, 
assign it to that route. Well, we can assign it now, actually. Uh, which I will do. Oh no, this bug is back. It's so annoying. Okay, yeah, you see how it... Oh, it's frustrating. Oh, bugs, bugs, bugs. Alright, so speed it up. It's still on order. As you can see here, the uh, Earth, Moon, Mars has gotten very, very, very busy. Um, okay, there goes our Rhea ship. It is available, so now it's in transit on its way to Rhea. Yeah, it's this one here, so it's got full, full everything. Good. Um, yeah, still a lot of colonists went for Mars. We. we I I purchase another ship with um with just colonists, so it's like twenty slots of colonists, and I I'm sure the AI has a few as well. But um, Mars is is pretty well habitable, um, so that that plays a factor in how many colonists actually want to go there. Um, yeah, ah, there's another bug with the uh, the ships being huge. It, it just kind of randomly happens where the ship is gigantic. Um, as you can see, we, we, we kind of scale the ships. Um, what I found was that if you just leave them at one size, it, it just became pretty much unplayable if you were, you know, out here trying to manage stuff in the solar system. Um, you couldn't really see your ships. They were just so small and everything. So they, they scale up. Um, when you get really close to them, they will um, stop scaling. So like this. So that kind of gives you a nice visual if you want to, you know, get in close to the planet. You can actually see things, and it looks nice. Okay, um, so we have a supply ship going out to Rhea, and um, you can always build colonies yourself. It just costs a lot of money. I think it's like five hundred thousand right now. Um, so, it, you know. It, it's more of a later game thing um, when you have extra cash and you want to, you know, get access to a specific resource somewhere. You'll colonize a planet and then you can supply resources from that planet and make more money transporting things. Um, but usually you're just going to want to let the uh, governments of the planets colonize for you. Um, same thing with buildings. I mean, the the colonies, the government planets, or the planet governments will set up like mining or uh, mines and uh, and refineries factories and everything else so you usually don't have to do that stuff but again if you want access to dilithium crystals um, on a planet and the the government is just not doing it or you need it now then you can go ahead and buy the or subsidize the factory and um, and give yourself access that way but yeah it's, it's been a while here and you see I mean just so many ships this little corridor here. So let's see. The moon has 14 million people now. It started with um, started with six and a half. The uh, Mars is almost at two million now. It started with 300,000 people. So that's growing pretty darn rapidly. It's up to 0.3 percent development. It starts at like 0 0.0102 something like that. Um, and obviously you you're trying to get that to 100. Um, that's probably the most important number in a planet's development because you know once that's at a hundred you're gonna be putting out all the water all the food that a planet can produce on its own until then you're gonna have to supply everything basically that it needs or well not everything I mean 24 percent from the moon it's gonna be doing some of its own food and water but not very much because there's really not too much water and food to be had on the on the moon to begin with Okay, um, I, I think that's about it that I will show you guys for now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having tons of fun right now playing this. I mean, just, just managing these different routes and setting up the, you know, different colonies when a new colony comes online, trying to, you know, race the supply first. Um, we don't have company reputations in, but that's actually what I'm going to be working on next, so, um, you know, when you get a jump start like this on on a new colony, you're gonna have 
a lot of clout with that colony and you'll be able to oh my recording actually skipped there sorry you'll be able to um, supply it and um, get better prices for it and everything else um, <clears throat> so I am going to leave this recording here uh, thank you very much for um, taking the time to watch this you know if, if you um, if this game interests you, please, you know, follow us on social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I'll put all the links below um, in the in the YouTube channel. If you found this on Facebook or, or Twitter, everything will be there. Um, sign up for our, our newsletter. It's on uh, www.mtworlds.com. Um, and the game will be coming out probably in uh, August. That is the plan right now. Um, so it'll be early access in August. Um, and... We're thinking early access will we'll probably be in that for maybe six months, maybe a year, not sure. Um, the game has multiplayer, it's going to have you know competitive co-op multiplayer. Um, it'll have leaderboards so that they'll have predefined games where you know you, you can be placed against different people playing at that you know playing the same exact scenario, the same uh, predefined game. Um, so the, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff coming, and uh, I mean, we just can't wait to bring it to you guys. So, uh, if you have any questions, comments, please don't hesitate to leave them. We you need all the feedback, all the help we can get. There's not a ton of people, you know, watching this stuff yet. So, uh, you know, if, if you guys have suggestions, you'll be heard, and um, you have a very good chance of your your suggestion making it to the game right now. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. Sorry this video went so long. I was hoping like 20 minutes, but it's like, what, 35 minutes now? Jeez. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys.